In this lesson, we'll look at how propeller angle is controlled by oil pressure in the pitch control unit. We'll also look at how the PCU is controlled by the PEC and FADEC, and take a closer look at the subsystems of the propeller. Let's look at the basic principles of how the counterweight and oil pressure control the pitch angle. Each of the six prop blades has a counterweight, so that the natural twisting moment in flight is towards a high pitch, coarse angle. So, if oil pressure is lost, the prop will auto-coarsen, that is, move towards a safe increased coarse pitch. Propeller pitch is changed by varying oil pressure in the pitch change actuator attached to each prop. If oil pressure on the coarse side plus the counterweight moment is greater than oil pressure on the fine side, then the piston moves backwards, forcing the prop towards coarse, assisted by the counterweight bias. If the fine side pressure is greater, the prop moves to a finer angle. Propeller pitch control is affected by many interlinked systems. Oil from the normal engine oil system is pressured by the PCU high pressure pump, driven by the prop reduction gearbox. The pitch control unit, PCU, routes the oil to the coarse and fine pitch sides of the pitch change actuator through several valves to vary prop angle. High pressure oil passes through the overspeed governor, also driven by the prop reduction gearbox, before entering the PCU. If prop RPM exceeds 1040, then the overspeed governor isolates the PCU from the high pressure supply, decreasing fine pitch oil pressure and allowing the counterweights to reduce prop speed. The alternate feather system has its own auxiliary oil tank on the prop reduction gearbox. If main oil pressure is lost, alternate feather feathers the prop by controlling valves inside the PCU. Operation of the PCU is monitored and controlled by the Propeller Electronic Control Unit, PEC, which talks to instruments on the flight deck and reports errors to the engine monitoring system accessed by maintenance on the arc tubes. The PEC also contains the auto feather circuits to automatically feather a prop if there's an engine out on takeoff. Sensor inputs are engine torque, prop speed from the magnetic pickup unit, MPU, the beta pitch angle from the transducer, and obviously condition lever and other settings from the flight deck. The PEC also interfaces with the synchrophase unit and the active noise and vibration unit, and with its local FADEC, with the other propellers FADEC, and with the other engines PEC. Because of their importance, the PECs and FADECs have dual channels that calculate independently and must agree. If one fails, then the other will function normally, but you'll get caution lights. Electrical power to the FADEX and PEX is from a permanent magnetic alternator, PMA, on each engine during normal running, or from the essential buses during starting and if there's a PMA failure. Now some propeller modes. In constant speed mode in flight, remember that there are only three normal prop speeds. Max cruise, 850, Max climb, 900, or normal takeoff, 1020, depending on condition lever setting. But how does power lever setting interact with condition lever setting? Well, for a power lever angle from flight idle up to about 55 degrees, the requested power increase is the same for all condition lever settings. But above 55 degrees, the requested power depends on condition lever setting, max cruise, max climb, or normal takeoff. 
The flat part of the graph is at the power lever rating detent. You are requesting, and should be getting, 100% of the rated power for the condition lever setting. In the power lever over travel region, advancing the levers requests up to 125% of the maximum takeoff rating. In over travel, the PEC will automatically command maximum prop speed, 1020 RPM. In beta mode, prop blade angle is set by the power levers. Flight beta is entered at low power settings. Note that in the forward power range, fine pitch blade angle is always kept above 16.5 degrees by PEC software. And failing this, above 16 degrees by hardware, in fact by cutting off oil supply. There's a stop gate at flight idle to prevent you accidentally going to ground beta in flight. If you override the detent in flight, the beta warning sounds. Never move the power levers below flight idle in flight. On landing, moving to below flight idle triggers the blue glare shield prop ground range lights. Reverse is below the zero prop angle disc position. In this range, requested power increases with power lever angle up to max reverse. Prop speed will be between 660 and 950 RPM with a maximum governed overspeed of 1020 RPM. In the forward power range, prop overspeed is governed by limiting oil pressure above 1071 RPM. And if that fails, by the FADEC reducing fuel flow above 1122 RPM. But in reverse, overspeed is governed by the FADEC only. Under speed is usually governed by the PEC at 660 prop RPM, both in flight and on ground, by varying blade angle. But to guard against the remote possibility that the same software error could be in both PECs, an independent automatic underspeed protection circuit, AUPC, is provided. AUPC is armed when a power lever is at or above flight idle, a condition lever is above start and feather, and auto feather and alternate feather are not active. NUPC is triggered when prop speed is low, less than 816 RPM, while torque is high, above 50%, for more than one second. A PEC caution light comes on, and a drive fine signal is generated to decrease prop angle and increase prop speed. Prop speed will only be limited by the overspeed governor. The AUPC is tested during the auto feather test. On the propeller control panel, the auto feather switch light is used to select the auto feather system before takeoff. Touch the switch light to select auto feather. The select segment comes on and auto feather select appears on the engine display. When the power levers are advanced for takeoff beyond 60 degrees and both engine torques exceed 50%, auto feather is armed. Abort the takeoff if the arm light does not come on. Power up trim is a separate system independent of auto feather, but up trim and auto feather often occur together. With the power levers in the rating position, up trim is triggered if the PEC detects torque below 25% on one engine, or prop speed below 816 RPM. Let's look at what happens to up trim and auto feather in the event of an engine out at takeoff. Firstly, the FADEC signals the FMU of the good engine to increase fuel to initiate a 10% power up trim illuminating up trim on the engine display. N top power is replaced by M top power. And the commanded torque is now 100%. Then, after a three second delay,
fork below 25% triggers the FADEC to open the autofeather solenoid valve on the failed engine, feathering the prop. The auxiliary feathering pump starts and operates for about 30 seconds. Its light comes on. You should move the condition lever of the failed engine to fuel off. Auto-feathering is disarmed in three ways. After it has been triggered on one engine to prevent auto-feathering a live engine, after takeoff with no engine failures by pressing the select light, or if one or both power levers are set to flight idle. But in this case, the select light stays on until you press it again. With the engines not running, you can also press the select light to test the auto feather system. Check your manual for indications. Hopefully you'll get the passed, not the failed message. You press the guarded alternate feather switch lights to feather a prop if the normal peck feathering fails. Alternate feather can also be used on ground by maintenance to feather or unfeather a prop. The green segment comes on for about 30 seconds, indicating that the DC alternate feather pump is running.